Hey, what's up guys? It's Eugene Pentland from Pentland Designs. And today, I'm going to be showing you part one of my series on building my electric longboard. So today, I'm just going to be going over all the parts that you need to buy and all of the CAD models that I made to mount everything. So I had previously made this using PLA. But as you can see, this is the motor mount. It, had, it wasn't quite strong enough. And over one bump every single time, this part that mounted directly to the truck kept on breaking. So I contacted Printed Solid, and they sent me a roll of nylon and ColorFab XT. So now, these motor mounts are going to be made out of nylon, and all of the other 3D printed parts are going to be made out of ColorFab XT, so the whole thing will just be a lot stronger, and I shouldn't have any strength issues anymore. The total cost of this build is around $400, as long as you have the filament and a longboard deck. If you don't have those, then it's going to probably end up costing you around $500. So first what you need to buy is a motor. This is a 180 kilovolt motor from um, DIY Electric Skateboard, along with a uh, 12 tooth, I believe, uh, pulley. I'll have a link in the video description of where you could buy all these things. A 12 tooth pulley that attaches to it. Um, and this is a belt driven system, so here's the belt that goes along with it. And, and the wheels that I chose, it has these spurs in the center, so that you can put a 3D printed part through it and have the geared section mounted to it. Next thing I got is these trucks. I chose these specifically because they have a very defined, very defined edges over here, so it was easy to match the profile, and I know it's going to have a good grip um, with the 3D printed part. So, along with the other side, as you can see, it broke completely on the side. This ends up getting mounted like this with it on both sides and the motor in cage in case on the inside. And next the motor connects to the electronic speed controller. It controls your acceleration rate and deceleration rate and a whole bunch of settings like that. And you're gonna wanna get a you're gonna wanna get a programmer for this so that you could adjust these settings to your liking. And then this connects to here the battery, but also the receiver for the remote control connects. I ended up going with a more expensive controller than I have in the sheet. I got this one also on electric skateboard doc, DIY electric skateboard .com. I am riding this around campus, so I just wanted to have a small little controller, even though I have seen that there are $20 controllers that you can take apart and 3D print new cases so that it's a lot more compact. Uh, if I went back and bought it again, I would try doing that. The electronic speed controller is going to connect to the batteries I have here two turning 5000 milliamp 3S batteries which are going to be connected in series so it makes one 6S battery and these two balance connectors are going to be connected together to make a 6 pin connector so it can all be charged at once. Lastly to charge the batteries I bought a Sky RC IMAX uh, B6. It was one of the cheapest and most reliable chargers that I found online and I didn't go for the dual power version I just went for the one that you could just buy a little DC charger. And lastly, you need a longboard deck. This is the one that I already had, longboard I stole from my brother. It's definitely not the cheapest longboard deck, but I'll have a link in the video description. So that's just about everything that you need to build an electric longboard. Now I'm going to go and show you all the CAD files of what everything looks like and how everything will be mounted. Now I'm in Fusion 360. The parts that are this whitish color these are the ones that are going to be printed out of nylon, and all the other parts that are red are going to be printed out of ColorFab XT. So this is what the motor mount looks like. Here's the profile of the truck, roughly. With PLA, these would always break just about right here when I would go over one specific bump. Nylon is a lot stronger and is a lot more resilient, so these connectors should last a lot longer. I may make it a little bit thicker, a little bit stronger in that area, just to ensure that, though. So the motor will be sticking out of this hole in the center, and then it will be attached to, and then, and then the belt will be attached right here, and connect to the wheel. This is the box for the electronic speed controller. It just has some holes to line up at the top. If I could try showing you what the profile looks like, it will be facing in this direction. So this is the center hole. This is the hole. The hole on the left is for these three the XT90 connector along with the capacitor, um, the on-off switch, and and the receiver for the remote control. Um, 
go right in this section and the on off switch goes right here. Along with having some holes in the side to mount it to the board. Lastly I have this battery cover. I make, may make some minor changes to it but it worked pretty well last time. The batteries just slide in along with having a lock in the front so when I do need to charge the batteries I can just undo these two screws and then slide the batteries out, charge them in their protective case and then slide them right, right back in. This front cover is strong enough to keep them in there while I'm riding and has these two slots where the wires come out from. And that just about sums up all you need to build an electric longboard. Thanks for watching guys. Please subscribe so you continue watching this video series where next I will be where next I'll be soldering and testing all the electronics. Please let me know what you think of this video in the comments below. In the description there'll be a link to the spreadsheet where you could find and buy all of these parts. Thanks for watching.